Continuing to keep you updated on the Micah Francis and John Paul Miller case. Well, we have what is some, uh, if true, very concerning news to present to you today. And this is courtesy of Robbie Harvey, which I'm sure many of you follow, you listen to. In fact, many of you probably uh, will already be familiar with what I'm going to be talking about today. But nevertheless, I still want to discuss it because it is something that Robbie had encouraged others to talk about because they want to get help from the general public about what we're going to talk about here. And so I wanted to provide that update for my viewers so they can be informed. I know a lot of you found my channel through the Micah Francis and John Paul Miller case, so I felt a duty to uh, come on here and present this information uh, to you. So that's what we are going to do. Now, previously we had heard that there was going to be multiple individuals, alleged victims of John Paul that were going to be coming forward to uh, file lawsuits um, involving inappropriate behavior to them at the hands of JP. We're still waiting on that to happen, okay? Uh, we don't know when exactly it's going to happen. We know that a couple of weeks ago, uh, we heard that it was imminent, that there were multiple. We did not know their ages. We did not know if they had any affiliation to the church. And so that is what we are still waiting for. But speaking of victims, there may be one out there right now that was allegedly, and again, I am saying allegedly, kidnapped by JP. That individual's name is Katie. And we're going to get into this phone call that Katie had apparently made to Robbie Harvey. And then also we're going to talk about another call that Robbie received from Katie's alleged mother, Becky. There's a lot of talk going around as to whether or not the calls were real. Is it, was it fake? Is it AI related? Maybe so, but there's a chance that it's not. Now, maybe by the time that some of you watch this video, Robbie would have already come forward and and said that, well, it was cleared, it was it was fake, or, or the victim was found, and if that's the case, well, then, you know, then there'll be a resolution to that. But, again, I want to talk about this because, you know, Robbie just did this live stream on Sunday, August 4th, so I wanted to talk about it. We're going to dive in in just a second, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight, or someone like me. That's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You will find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple different ways you could do that. One by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video or become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash news. That link is in the description. You can check out all the cool features Patreon has to offer. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, I am going to, for those that are interested, and again, some of you may have already watched Robbie's live stream and maybe you just want to get my, my take on it, just my opinions. I know a lot of you say that uh, you know, you watch me, not because I'm not a clip channel, as I've, I've said multiple times before, I'm a commentator, you know, we just do the, you know, we just talk here, we just, you know, present the information, and then, you know, let you guys make your own decisions about what you think about it, and a lot of you appreciate the recaps, and, you know, you don't like, you've told me, you know, you don't necessarily like the clips, and you don't like the sound effects, and the fancy graphics, the bells and whistles, and all that, and so I try to do the best job that I can as, of presenting the information to you. Um, coming at it as you know, as a commentator who who talks about church corruption and exposes the false, the false uh, teachers in the pulpit and all of that. But uh, if you do want to, after you get done watching my video, if you want to go check out, um, and I encourage you to, 
uh, to Robbie's live stream because you're going to hear one of the phone calls that he recorded. I will put a link to his video in the description here of my video and you can go and check it out. So let's get into it. Robbie did this live stream on Sunday, August 4th, and he talked about a phone call that he received two weeks prior. Uh, and I, he never said the exact date, but I, I figured that that would have been on, if the if it was if I was doing my math correctly, that would have been on Sunday, July 21st, that he would have received that phone call. He said he received a phone call around 11 p.m. Eastern time. Now, he said that he did not record this particular phone call because as the call was going on, it only lasted two minutes. He was grabbing his wife's phone. He was trying to get his FBI contacts and everything like that to present the information that he was being told on the phone. So uh, this, by the way, too, was Robbie talked about. He had also done a live that same night on July 21st. And this call, interestingly enough, came into him about 40 minutes, 45 minutes after he got done with his live stream. So remember that. Uh, and the timing, again, I think is, is important to note. So he gets a phone call. He says, it sounds like a young woman, uh, probably in their teens. And she said that her name is Katie. And she says that she was with JP. And she said that JP wants to talk to Robbie Harvey. Robbie said, I'm not going to talk to that man. I've said this before multiple times. He called the police on me before. And when he did that, he lost his right to talk to me, you know, even text me, all of that. Robbie has said that multiple times on many of his videos over the past several weeks. But then in the background, Robbie could hear JP's voice. And again, Robbie had said, I don't want to talk to him. I'm not going to talk to him. But he could hear JP's voice in the background say, well, you're gonna. Okay. Now, at this point, he claims that Katie says and confronts JP and asks him, he says, did you call the police on him? Why did you call the police on him? And then he could hear a brief little argument exchange between the two. He then hears Katie begin to cry. She says that she is trapped. She doesn't know where she is. JP won't let her go. And Robbie's, you know, saying, look, stay on the phone with me. Stay on the phone. You know, do you know where you are? And she's, again, she's just, I don't know. She could then hear whispering. Robbie could hear her whispering and, and talking probably to JP. Uh, and again, more crying, but that was pretty much it. And then the call dropped, okay? Now this was a, you know, no caller ID here on the phone. So that's another, you know, thing to note here. Uh, but again, was this true? It, is this alleged Katie, is this a real individual? That's the question that Robbie was asking. Now, he did call police and he contacted the FBI. Now, he credits Myrtle Beach Police. He says they, he, he said, look, there's a, I got a call from a young lady. Her name was said she was Katie. She was trapped. She didn't know where she was. And and so police showed up to JP's house that same night. Okay, again, this, was, this would have been on the 21st of July. Now, Robbie claims that Police arrived, they didn't find anything at the home. He says that JP was apparently very cooperative with authorities in this. And again, they cleared him. There was no KD there. They didn't find anybody except JP. Now, before I get to this next call, let me just interject my thoughts on this. Why would somebody who was allegedly kidnapped call Robbie Harvey, of all people, instead of the police? Why would JP, if in fact he did kidnap this Katie, and if this call is real, why would he instruct Katie to call Robbie Harvey? And if you were kidnapping somebody, why would you want to put it out there to anybody that that's actually what you were doing? This is a valid question, I think, that I have in this. So... And many have said that JP is doing this to mess with Robbie. And we're going to get to the second call where, where a lot more of this is going to maybe start to make sense. And again, Robbie did not record that first call because he was trying to, remember, get the contacts. He's, by the way, he did bring his wife on. Um, his wife did confirm uh, the first phone call because he brought her over and put it on speakerphone as you know Katie was talking. And so his wife, uh, Tiffany, I believe her name is, did confirm uh, that 
Robbie did get that call from this individual allegedly named Katie. Let's get to the second phone call now. This occurred about 10 days later on Wednesday, July 31st. Okay. Robbie gets another phone call. Another number that he doesn't recognize. And the way that this call went, this this is a, a woman that claims to be the name Becky, who I guess is Katie's mother. And she was very frantic. And, and for those that want to, you know, again, if you want to go and listen to, to Robbie's video, then again, I'll have that link for you in the description. You know, I, know, I know, again, a lot of you just enjoy my recaps and, you know, you just prefer the recap version of what I do as opposed to the clips. But, and I'll try and do the best I can here. So thank you for all of you for, you know, your patience and that and uh, entrusting me to provide you with the recaps that I do. Becky was very frantic on the phone. And I'm talking very frantic. Um, came at Robbie Harvey, accusing him of basically um, inappropriate behavior with her daughter, Katie. Okay. Not JP, at least not at first. I want to point that out. The first part of the phone call was all about, you know, this mom, Becky, going at Robbie Harvey, saying that he's the one that was trying to effectively, you know, again, have the inappropriate behavior with her daughter. And Robbie's trying to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Who is your daughter? I, I don't know who this is. You know, it, it didn't come out until later that she said the name of Katie. And he says, oh, wait a minute. And then he starts to, you know, mention about the first phone call. But all throughout the call, you hear Becky, again, very French. She's like, I, it just doesn't sound like this would be, is this the Robbie Harvey from, you know, the, the creator who's always talking about Micah? Oh, and let me also say this, because I don't want to forget this. This is important. At the very first part of the call, and this stuck out to me, the mom, Becky, seemed very hostile towards Micah. I, I, that's very important in this. And she said, oh, that Micah, you know, it's all this talk about Micah, this and that. And it, look, 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 the girl... She did what she did. She she blew her you know what out. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And and she starts getting into, you know, all these claims about how all these people think that she didn't do it. No, she did. She did. She blew her you know what out. So I I thought that was just strange to start the call off that way. You know, again, this is the Robbie Harvey, this is the creator, the one who's always, who's just so obsessed with Micah and everything and just, and so it transitions from there into the daughter and Becky accusing Robbie of text messages that were sent. She, she says that she had his number and it was, she goes, it's your number that was sending the text messages to my daughter asking her for, you know, all these inappropriate things. And you, if you want to listen to the call, you can hear it there. I won't repeat all of it here for obvious reasons. But again, Robbie's saying, what are you talking about? What, what what are you getting at here? I I didn't, I don't know who your daughter is. Why would I do this? And, and she, she threatens to tell his wife. And he's like, you can tell my wife right now. And <laughs> Robbie brings his wife on the call. Uh, and, and she's right there. And she's like, you got to know what your husband did. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you. And, and all this while she's saying that she's going to, she's like, I'll send it to you. She's Tells Robbie, I'll send you the text messages I have. I'll email you more evidence that I have. Now, as this call continues on, John Paul finally gets mentioned up. Oddly enough, though, uh, Becky just refers to him at a couple points as just John, uh, which is interesting because I've never heard him just referred to as John um, at any point during this story. I've heard John Paul, John Paul Miller, JP, JP Miller, right? We've heard all these different, you know, combinations of his name, but never just John, just John. Um, and then she starts saying that she starts to calm down a little bit. You know, Robbie's even saying, look, I'll, I'll go to the, the police with you. Uh, you know, I don't even li live in South Carolina, which is what, you know, she said on the phone, you know, I thought you lived in Florida. He's like, I do live in Florida. And he's like, that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell you, but I'll, I'll go down to the authorities with you. And look, she, he even says, look, JP doesn't like me. You, look, you, you understand. He's like, why would I bring my wife on the call if I did these things that you're accusing me of doing? Why would I want to involve my wife in it? And she's like, okay, maybe that makes sense, right? She then starts talking about, and then we know, 
she reveals the age of Katie, which, which she says is 17. And she says, look, she's very, you know, she's going to probably be mad at me for this. And, you know, she doesn't turn 18 for another nine months yet. Um, and she talks about how she's always wanting to go down to that church. And he's like, what do you mean go down to the, ch- go down to the church and do what? And so she wants to do the Justice for Micah thing. So she, she wants to be a part of that. So, okay, now we're getting some more context here. So Katie apparently is somebody who's involved with the protests. Um, and this is why Robbie wanted people to know about this. Because for anybody that knows, because they admit it. They said they live in JP's neighborhood. Okay. Katie and her mom, Becky, they live in JP's neighborhood. So if anybody, I'm saying this to you now before I continue. If you are in that neighborhood and you know a Katie or you know a... A Becky, you know, inform the authorities. Share Robbie's video with them because it's very important. Because again, if, if this Katie victim is real, this, I, I mean, there's someone here that needs help, okay? So she says again, she's always going down to the church and she's, and I got this other guy, CJ, who's always creeping around my my neighborhood and and everything. And, you know, he's even, you know, been in the, in the, in the driveway, you know, she said, and, and Interestingly enough, Robbie never mentioned, uh, because I listened to the whole thing, he never mentioned uh, CJ. Now, I I don't know if, when I heard that, I I immediately thought of CJ's crime concepts um, on on YouTube. For those of you that know that you go to the protests out there at the church, CJ's always there. He he does a good job of, of, you know, filming all the events, and he's, he's followed along with the story, too. He's had interactions with J.P., so I thought it was interesting, but Robbie never mentioned CJ. I don't know why. I don't know if Robbie knows CJ or does, or maybe he just, and I'm not even trying to say anything, but like maybe he just wasn't really trying to put the focus on that. Um, and he was just really trying to get out this information about Katie and and uh, and her mom and Becky. Uh, but I, I thought that was interesting. So I don't know for those of you that caught that or not, I don't know if that was supposed to be a reference to cj's crime concepts or not but she says that the cj guy's always around here poking around trying to get information and find just just a little something there i i had to point that out maybe cj's already responded to that on his channel i'm not sure but anyway going on here uh she talks about how and this this will take you back to another moment from this case she talks about how JP was up in a magnolia tree. Wait a minute. Isn't that when he fell out of the, allegedly fell out of the tree that was, I guess, in his ex-wife, Allison Williams' yard? Remember when he says he broke his back and everything else like that, or he allegedly broke his back in all these places? So is Becky claiming that JP was also in her tree and, and, and spying or whatever? She says he's up in the magnolia tree. Now, you know, Robbie says that he talked to several people that are in that neighborhood who claim that there are no magnolia trees in the neighborhood at all. But others are saying that, in fact, there are magnolia trees in the neighborhood. I don't know what's real and what's not. Okay, I, so it's both sides here. People are saying there is a tree. There are those trees and there are not those trees. So I don't really know if that's the case. But as the call continues, she starts to calm down a little bit. And, you know, she then... She then starts to shift and say, okay, well, maybe it wasn't you, Robbie, after all. And, you know, maybe, look, this jump, and then she, and then she says it, she says, this jump, John guy, John Paul is, is trying to also have inappropriate behavior with my daughter. And, and again, she mentions, you know, her being just, just 17. And so it, it, the weird shift there and how it, it went from him to, from Robbie, then it's to JP, then she brings CJ into this, and she says that when her daughter gets home, she's going to get her phone, and she's going to go through the text messages. Uh, but then at one point on the call, she also claimed that she already had the phone. So there's some inconsistencies here in the story. I also want to point out, this was probably the biggest takeaway from the call that she gave to Robbie. When Robbie talks about how he got a phone call, okay, from 10 days prior, remember, on July 21st, from, from a young individual named Katie. And all of a sudden, she stopped him right there, and she said, oh, wait, she said, yeah, I know about that. She was in the hotel. Oh, wait, wait, the hotel. The hotel. Now, that was not made known on the first phone call that Robbie received from Katie. 
She just said that she was trapped. She didn't know where she was. JP wouldn't let her go. But the mom here, Becky, says that her daughter was trapped in a hotel and JP would not let her go. Now, eventually, he did let her go because her mom did claim that at some point she did come back home. So, you know, as far as where she is now, we, we, we just don't know. Um, the call on the 31st of July, she said that when she gets home, she's going to get her phone. You know, she Again, she talks about how her daughter is, you know, very strong and she was worried that her daughter was going to, like, come after her for accusing her of things and all these different creators that are trying to have inappropriate behavior with her. So again, it was very frantic how she was acting on the phone. Robbie said, look, I'll help you. Look, email me. He's like, email me. And, and this was the other thing I took from the call. Becky said that she had about, <laughs> let me, before I say this, there, there is a, um, when I listened to the call, and just this next part, I sensed a very um, evil spirit behind it. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not the 911 call was real or not that Micah made. I I've said it, and many of you have said it. Was AI involved? Maybe it was. I don't know for sure, but... There's just something about these calls that Robbie talked about that he got from Katie and from Becky that there's just this, to me, an evil, evil spirit behind it. But this is what she said to Robbie. She says, I have at least 300 pieces of evidence against this JP, against John Paul. Where have we heard that before? Wasn't it John Paul that originally said, I got 350 pieces of proof? that he was gonna prove in the court. If this woman, Becky, has over 300 pieces of evidence against JP, again, why is she calling Robbie Harvey and not the police? Why was Katie calling Robbie Harvey and not the police? Did JP try to frame Robbie here and use technology and everything like that to manipulate his phone number to make it seem like Robbie was the one who was having inappropriate behavior here? That's the question. That that's the question that Robbie presented. Let me also mention something else about that number 350 300. Remember, it was also apparently the amount that was given Trisha Ross signed off on these checks from Solid Rock Church under the title of benevolence that they were going to give people $350 to dig up dirt on creators. That number keeps coming up 350 or 300, right? So again, Robbie said that this woman, Becky, was going to email him the evidence that she had so we can get it to the FBI. He never received an email. She was going to send him the alleged text message exchange between apparently his phone number and her daughter, Katie. He never got it. So now we're left wondering. And also, by the way, Becky on the phone was kept saying a couple times, I, I got to take my medicine. You know, I'm sorry that I came at you. Um... So I don't know if that has anything to do with this, you know, talking about taking medicine. But is Becky real? Is Katie real? Is Katie a real victim of JP? Or is this whole thing just made up? Was it a fake phone call to try and stir up problems for Robbie Harvey? Because, again, he's been covering this case. He has a large following. JP doesn't like him, right? I will say this to you. I am stunned. That this, you know, we're, we're three months past Micah's unfortunate death. And still, we've had no major arrests outside of Robert Lachelle from the church. But no, he's still out there. I want to hear from you guys, though. You can leave me your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think about this? Is Katie a real victim? Is... Becky, her actual mom. Do these people exist? Have anybody been able to, you know, corroborate their, you know, them living in the neighborhood? Uh, having a relationship with JP of any kind? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And again, I will have a link in the description 
uh, to Robbie's video if you would like to check that out. Also, don't forget, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or become a monthly contributor on my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. Then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.